Congratulations, you've recently purchased a Bamboo Labs A1 Combo from Micro Center. In this video, we'll walk you through the entire process of unboxing, assembling, and setting up your new 3D printer, as well as starting your first 3D print. There are only a few basic tools needed to get started. You'll need a box cutter to open up the box. You'll need scissors to cut off the zip ties that keep the printer together inside the box. Or you can also use this flush cutter to cut the zip ties and trim filament for the AMS. First, we'll need to unbox the printer. Place the box on the ground in an open area, ensuring the box is right side up. Slice open the top of the box and open the cardboard. There's two handles for the bag, which are taped to the top sides of the box. Pull off the tape, and then you can pull the entire bag by the handles. This allows you to fully pull all of the parts from the box in one motion. Pull the part bag from the box and set the box aside. Open the plastic bag, and then you can discard the bag. All of the parts will be stacked in the foam pieces. The manual will be sitting on the very top. You can use this as an opportunity to familiarize yourself with the steps of the build process. The build plate will be sitting in a bag on the top. You can place this aside for now. There are four rotary spools for the automatic material system, which are nestled in the foam at the top. Remove all four pieces and set aside. There are parts on the sides of the foam, so make sure you remove these before disassembling the rest of the packing material. On one side, there is the part box. The part box will contain everything that you see here. We will review the contents of the part box later. There is also a project box, which is included with every A1 combo. There's a variety of different projects that are included with the printers. This one came with a piano music box. On the other side of the foam, there is a power cable and a box containing filament swatches for different filament material types and colors. There's also a piece of tape that is holding the purge wiper in place. Remove the tape and remove the purge wiper. With everything set aside, start to remove the rest of the packing material. The AMS and stand are inside the top pieces of foam. This slides right off and it can be placed aside. Remove the AMS and the AMS stand from the foam. Remove the cardboard side pieces. One of the side pieces will contain the single spool holder. This can be removed from the cardboard and set aside. Next, gently remove the printer frame. This slides out easily and it can stand up on its own with the large plate facing downwards. The A1 base housing is on the bottom with two pieces of foam on either side. Gently slide it out of the foam and set aside. Under the base, there's some additional parts, such as the PTFE tubes for the AMS and some sample filament. All parts are now unboxed and ready for assembly. To begin assembly, we will start with unlocking the heat bed. Start with the A1 base housing. There's two large plastic zip ties wrapped around the base housing. Cut both of these zip ties. Remove the foam from around the heat bed and remove the zip ties. Slide the heat bed to ensure that it has full mobility before moving on. You should be able to push the heat bed all the way to the front and all the way to the back. Now we will mate the base housing and the printer frame. Stand the printer frame on the table. The bottom plate extending from the frame is the front side of the frame. There are two plastic Z-axis limiters that lock the Z-axis in place. Use the Allen Key H2 tool to remove the four total screws from the two plastic pieces. Now remove the two plastic Z-axis limiters. The housing for the cables on the tool head are taped down to the base of the frame. Remove the tape. Make sure to slide the cables out of the way so they're not pinched when inserting the base housing. Firmly hold the housing and rotate it 45 degrees and place the housing inside the frame, matching up the two notches of the base to the frame. Rotate the base back down until it is fully flush with the printer frame on the table. Next, we'll unlock the tool head. Cut the zip ties to remove the cardboard wrapper from the tool head and the X axis. There are several zip ties in total. With the ties cut, remove the cardboard and foam paddings from the frame. Now we will remove the Y axis cover. Push the heat bed fully to the front end away from the frame. There's a cover for the Y axis. Open this cover and gently slide it out. This will expose the screw holes to lock the base housing to the frame. There are 10 screw holes that are highlighted with green circles. Use the 10 ST323 screws to lock the base housing and frame together. The Allen Key H2 tool can be used for this. 
slide the heat bed all the way to the back towards the frame. This will reveal two more screw holes that are highlighted with green circles. Install the last two ST323 screws. Push the heat bed fully to the front end again and gently slide the Y-axis cover back into place, ensuring that the clips are aligned and closing fully. With the frame and the bed now locked together, turn the A1 90 degrees onto its rear, laying it on the edge of a table. Make sure the printer is secure on the table. The cable attached to the frame is a cable box for the hot end, and it must be attached to the bed housing on the bottom of the housing on the right side. Align the two clips on the cable box with the holes on the base. Slide up the cable box until the Type-C cable clicks into place. You do not want to force the insert, it can damage the connection. Make sure that the cable box is nice and flush in the slot, and then screw in the pre-installed screw with the Allen Key H2 tool. There are three connectors to plug into the base. They are color coordinated. So match the orange plug to the orange connector, the green to the green, and the white to the white. Make sure you do not mix up these connectors as this can damage the printer. The cable box has a cover slot to keep the orange cable safe. Insert the cables and close the cover. If the cover is already closed, this can actually be pried open with the H1.5 key. Carefully pick up the printer and stand it back on the table. The bed can slide around when being rotated, so make sure you hold the base and the frame firmly, protecting the bed as you lift. Turn the screen to the front of the printer so it can face forward. Now we'll install the plate onto the heat bed. To install the plate, match the notch on the top of the bed to the notch on the top of the plate. The bed is magnetic and it will hold the plate in place. Now we will install the purge wiper. Slide the hot end away toward the motor cover to clear the space to install the purge wiper. Slide the purge wiper into the slot and install the one M312 screw using the H2 Allen key tool. The printer is all set. Now you can install the single spool holder if you have a regular A1 or install the AMS if you have an A1 combo. To install the single spool holder, simply snap open the bottom of the spool holder. The opening will slide onto the top of the frame and click into place. Snap the connector closed. There is a single PTFE tube included with the printer for the spool holder. Slide one end of the tube into the end of the spool holder. Slide the other end into the tool head. There's four holes to choose from, but any of them will work for single spool printing. There's a spare clip in the parts box that can attach to the PTFE tube and the tool head cable to keep them neat and out of the way of the tool head. Place a spool on the spool holder with the lead of the spool facing counterclockwise. Thread the filament manually until it hits the tool head. You are now ready to print with a single spool. To use the AMS, first attach the AMS to the AMS stand. There are four AMS stand screws in the parts box to attach the AMS to the stand. Place the stand on the table. Hold the AMS upright and match the notch on the AMS to the stand. Use the four AMS stand screws and the H2 Allen key to attach the AMS to the stand. To attach the rotary spools to the AMS, match the color of the rotary spool to the color on the AMS. There are two labeled green and two labeled orange. Slide the rotary spool onto the AMS until it clicks in place. To attach the AMS to the printer, choose which side that you'll like the AMS to be on. The four PTFE tubes are at different lengths, with the shorter tubes running to the filament physically closer to the printer. For this setup, I'll have the AMS on the right side of the printer. The two shorter PTFE tubes will run to the one and two slots, since they are closer to the tool head. The two longer PTFE tubes will run into the three and four slots, since they're further from the tool head. The tubes are easily inserted into the AMS black attachment pieces. Insert the other ends of the PTFE tubes into the four holes on the tool head. Place the shorter tubes on the side closest to the AMS, in this case on the right side, and the longer tubes on the left side. You can use the clip to have the four tubes clipped to the cable running to the tool head, and this will help keep it neat and out of the way of the tool head. Take the cable from the AMS and plug it into the port on the back of the printer. To load the printer with filament, simply slide a filament spool onto the rotary spool. Pay attention to the orientation of the filament. The two and four slots require filament in one orientation, 
and the 1 and 3 slots require filament in a different orientation. To insert the filament into the AMS, you do want to save the step for after the printer is powered on and set up. You can simply press down on the yellow button to open the slot for the filament and push the filament into the slot. When the AMS is powered on, it will simply pull the filament into the AMS tubes. Repeat for the other three filament spools so the AMS is fully loaded. Again, save the step for after the printer is set up for the first time. Plug in the power cable to the printer and turn the printer on. Your A1 combo is all assembled and ready to be configured for its first print. Setting up your printer is very simple. When the printer is turned on, there will be a start button on the screen. Simply press the start button to begin the setup process. You'll be prompted to select your language. In this case, we'll go with English. Next, you'll be prompted to select your region. In this case, we'll select North America. Now connect to Wi-Fi. You can skip this step altogether and start calibrating the printer if you choose to use it offline. We'll set up with the Wi-Fi. Press select Wi-Fi and select your local network. Make sure you are on a network capable of 2.4 GHz. If your router only has 5 GHz available, you may have to adjust your router settings to open up the 2.4 GHz bandwidth. Enter your Wi-Fi password, and the printer is now connected to Wi-Fi. Next, you can log on to the Bamboo Handy app. If you do not have a Bamboo account, you can skip this step, but we do recommend setting up an account and linking to the printer. I have a Bamboo account and the Bamboo Handy app on my phone. Simply press the plus symbol at the top of the app, and this will open the camera. Scan the QR code on the screen and you can link the printer to your account. This allows you to print remotely from anywhere that you can access your account. Now the printer will start its calibration process for motor noise cancellation, vibration cancellation, and bed leveling. Press start and the printer will start calibrating itself. The process takes about 20 to 30 minutes and will make a variety of noises. These are all normal. Once the calibrations are complete, you're all set and you can press go. If you connected the printer to Wi-Fi, it will now check for firmware updates. Select update and the printer will update itself. After the firmware update is complete, you will be prompted to lubricate the Y axis. In the parts box, there is lubricating grease and lubricating oil. For this, you wanna use the tube of lubricating oil. Cut off the tip and open it up. Remove the Y axis cover to reveal the rail for the Y axis. Simply squeeze a light amount of oil along both sides of the rail. You'll have to slide the heat bed from one end to another to fully oil the rail. After lubricating the rail, place the Y-axis cover back on and select Done on the screen to confirm the completion. The printer will automatically notify you when it's time to lubricate the Y-axis. This is an important maintenance step to keep the printer running well. Now the printer is all set and ready to use. Load the AMS with filament Follow the previous step of installing the filament into the AMS. On the screen, select the AMS button to open the AMS settings. Select the spool that you want to add filament to and press Edit. This will allow you to program the material type and color of the filament. In this case, we are using white generic PLA. Now we can do our first print. Each printer will come with some files already pre-installed. Press the print button on the screen and it'll show all of the loaded files. We will print a Benchy as our first print. Select Benchy and then press Next. It'll ask you which filament that you want to use. We will use the generic white PLA that we installed in slot number three. Press Print and the printer will take it from here. The printer will begin its first print. A Benchy is a good first print to ensure that everything is working correctly. Once the print is done, you can analyze it and see if there's any settings that need adjustment. Congratulations, you're all set and ready to start printing with your Bamboo Lab A1 combo. Be sure to stop by your local Micro Center if you have any questions, need any assistance with your printer, or if you want to pick up any additional filament or parts.